Hello boys and girls, my name is Carrie Johnson and I am a third grade teacher at Bluegrass Elementary. I first want to start by giving a shout out to my Bluegrass Eagles and to let you know that I miss you very much. I'm excited to be here today with all of you and to share this lesson on matter. Today, we will be doing activity one for third grade science. The activities and handouts that you see today can be found under the Student Resources tab on the Knox County Schools website at www.knoxschools.org. Make sure you show us what you have learned by tweeting at KCS Science. If this video is hard to understand, turn on closed captions. Adjust the playback speed to slow down the video. Consider watching short clips, then pause, listen, and watch again. Ask someone in your home to watch the video with you. Stop frequently and talk to your partner about what you heard and understood. Today, we will be learning about matter, and I have two questions for you. First, what is matter? The second question will come a little later, and I want to know, can you see the particles that make up matter? Let's talk. Matter is anything that has weight and takes up space. It comes in three states, a solid, a liquid, and a gas. You probably remember these from second grade. Everything, including you and I, is made of matter and exists in different forms called states. Almost all matter exists in the three states previously mentioned, a solid, a liquid, and a gas. These states of matter have different properties and behave and appear differently from one another. What is matter made of exactly? So all matter is made of tiny particles that cannot be seen by our bare eyes. You would have to use some sort of scientific instrument to see the particles because they are so small. The particles in matter are attracted towards other particles and are always moving. The hotter the substance is, the faster the particles move. So I want you to think about an ice cube. An ice cube is a solid, right? As that ice cube begins to melt, the particles begin to move faster. And if you take a look at the two pots at the bottom of your screen on the stove here, you will see that the one on the left has boiling water, but the one on the right has gotten hotter and it has begun to evaporate. You will see water vapor above the pot. Those particles are moving very quickly. The first matter I wanna talk about are solids. If you take a look at the diagram at the bottom of your screen, you will see an example of the particles in a solid. In solid, the particles are very close together, so they cannot be squeezed. Solids have a fixed shape and volume. The particles cannot move freely and they vibrate in a fixed position. I want you to remember this diagram as we go on later in the lesson. The second one are liquids. Take a look at the bottom of your screen again. You will see a diagram of liquid particles. The particles in liquids are still attracted to one another, but are weaker than those in solids. They slide past or roll over one another. Liquids have a fixed volume, but take the shape of their container. The particles in a liquid are still very close together, so the liquids cannot be squeezed into smaller spaces. The third one, again, is gas. Take a look at the bottom of your screen and you will see what particles of gas look like. Gas particles spread out and will not stay in a container unless it has a lid on it. Gas particles have more energy than those in a solid or a liquid. They're constantly moving freely in all directions. They spread out and take up the space that is available. And because there is so much space between the particles, the gas can be compressed. They don't have a fixed shape or volume. 
Be sure to remember the three diagrams for later in the lesson. Next, you're going to see a video of someone squeezing a cup. Now this cup is a solid. Remember, solid particles are packed so tightly that their particles move in their fixed position. They only vibrate. You are unable to squeeze the cup. Next, you're going to see liquid in a bottle. Particles of a liquid, again, are very close together and more attracted to one another than gas. They are almost as close as a solid, but can slide past one another. They are so, they are so close together, they are difficult to squeeze. So as you see in the demonstration, we're able to squeeze the bottle, but we cannot compress it completely. That's because those particles are still very close together but not as close as a solid. The last one is gas in a bottle. Particles of gas are not very attracted to one another. They are so far apart, they actually bounce off each other. They are much farther apart than a solid or liquid. You can fully compress a water bottle without a lid to show that the gas escapes. So as we compress it, and let it go, you will see the water bottle compress and expand. You know the gas is escaping by watching the demonstration in the second video. You can see that the balloon inflates as we compress the bottle and it deflates as we let go of the bottle. Here are three examples of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. The first one is a solid. Here in this example, you will see some pencils. Now the pencils, no matter what you do with them, you can break them or you can sharpen them. They're still going to be a solid. The liquid here, the liquid takes the shape of the container. So no matter what kind of cup we pour the milk into, it's going to take the shape of that container but we're never going to have any more or any less of that liquid unless we pour more into it or we drink it. The last one is gas. You will see the balloons. The gas in those balloons have taken the space of the size of that balloon. If we were to put too much in it, the balloon would expand and eventually burst. Now, here we're going to stop and I want you to remember what we've previously talked about. Remember the three diagrams I told you to think about as we moved on? At the bottom of this page, you're gonna show me what you've learned. Take a look at the definitions of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. At the bottom, I want you to illustrate what the particles in a solid look like, what the particles in a liquid look like, and what the particles in a gas look like. And then I want you to label each one. After you're finished illustrating and labeling, I want you to give me an example of each. Once you have finished that activity, we get to move on to the experiment phase. In the experiment phase, you're going to start by making a prediction. And I want to know, what will happen or what do you think will happen to a balloon when you combine a liquid and a solid? And I want you to tell me, what do you think you're going to see? First, you're going to gather your materials and follow the steps at the bottom of page one. Before you begin, I want you to illustrate what you observe. Make sure you include underneath the illustration the state of matter the baking soda is in and the state of matter the vinegar is in. Don't worry about the bottom of the page two. That will come later in the lesson. The materials you're going to need for your matter experiment are an empty water bottle, baking soda, a balloon, vinegar, and a small funnel. Now remember, adult supervision is required to do this activity, so make sure you have an adult help you. Also, make sure you wear protective eyewear. Include a small funnel, but if you do not have a small funnel, you can do what I did and cut the top 
of a water bottle off and improvise using that as a funnel. Next, you're gonna see the demonstration of the experiment. Make sure you wear protective eyewear and that you have adult supervision. Do not proceed if you do not have either of these. The first thing you're going to do is take your funnel and place it on top of your water bottle. You're going to pour your vinegar about one third full into the bottle. Remove your funnel and place your balloon on the opening of the funnel. Next, you're going to take your baking soda and pour it into the top of the funnel. Once you're in there, you're going to put the baking soda into the balloon by stretching the balloon repeatedly. It is kind of difficult to do, so make sure you have someone helping you do this part. If you notice, I'm holding the top of the balloon so it doesn't come off the opening of the funnel. Once you have gotten the balloon about halfway full with baking soda, you can remove the balloon and put it on top of the water bottle with vinegar. Turn your balloon upright, and as the vinegar and the baking soda begin to mix, you will see the balloon inflate. Be very careful during this process. Last, I want you to draw conclusions. I want you to illustrate a picture of what you observed and what you believe the particles of gas might look like inside of the balloon if we could see them. What happened to the vinegar and the baking soda in the water bottle? Did the states of matter change? I want you to explain why you could not see the particles inside of the balloon after the reaction. Last, remember, the best thing about being a scientist is that we never have to stop experimenting. So I want you to extend a little. Increase or decrease the amount of vinegar and or the baking soda to observe the degree of inflation. I want to know, did you have a different result? Did the balloon get bigger or smaller as you adjusted the amount of vinegar or baking soda? What did you observe? Thank you so much for coming today and visiting with me with this lesson. I'm so excited to get to share it with you and I hope you had fun learning today. Goodbye.